A very warm welcome to you all to Scotch Watch, as you know, uncovering whiskey, one dram and one story at a time. I'm Alex Robertson, Shivers Brothers Head of Heritage and Education. You will have seen that I had to read my own name there, which is slightly concerning. Um, and I'm delighted, as always, to be joined by my co-host, Sandy Hislop. Sandy, how are you doing? And thank you for your hero, Gerardo. How are you doing, Sandy? I'm doing OK, Alex. I can't believe Thursday again, another episode of Scotch Watch. It's going to be jam-packed tonight. We've got a lot of stuff on tonight, Alex, haven't we? Yeah, it's brilliant. It's great to be back in this. You know, after an initial series in July, it's great to be back in, as we approach winter here in Scotland. So, Sandy, I see you're in your garage again, uh, miscellaneous. What's the two displays behind you, interestingly? Oh, this is uh, vintage glass tonight, and we've got old dinky toys tonight. So we've got a real mixture tonight, yeah. Well, I'm going to come back to that in a moment, Sandy, and explain why you're surrounded by dinky toys and glass. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen... Ladies and gentlemen, tonight we welcome two guest stars, um, both representing Europe's number one Scotch whisky in Valentine's. Firstly, after two years walking the whisky walk and talking the whisky talk in France as Valentine's ambassador, uh, France, of course, being the world's number one uh, country for Scotch whisky. Our next guest brought her expertise to the global Valentine's marketing team, where today is brand manager. She was a key part of the team behind Valentine 7 Bourbon Finish, which is the other star of the show tonight. So welcome to Scotch Watch, Hannah Ingram. Hannah, welcome along. How are you doing? Hi there. I'm good, thanks. Thank you for having me, for inviting me on. Oh, it's a pleasure, Hannah. And listen, we're going to shortly discuss the Valentine 7 project and you're going to provide a behind the scenes look as to how it was born. But how does it feel to see it launched, Hannah? Um, I would say it's a mixture of excitement, of pride, and a bit of relief as well. Because <laughs> I think that when people see Valentine 7 out there on the shelf, whether it's in a supermarket, behind a bar, online, that's them seeing it for the first time. But for us on our side, it's a culmination of so many months of development, of hard work, of experimentation. So yeah, it's, it's great to finally have it out there for people to enjoy. Well, our congratulations. It's in incredible. And Sandy, something I always notice, I'm always incredibly proud to see the bottles on the shelves when I travel. And I always think what it must be like to be the person who made that or blended it or distilled it or matured it. But there's a whole team behind that, isn't there? Absolutely. Yeah, we've got a great, a great team at Valentine's. We're able to to control the quality right from new distillate, cask selection, every bit. It's a pleasure to come to work because everybody loves working for the brands. They've got great heritage, fabulous reputation. It's just the business. Ah, brilliant. Well, listen, second joining us from one of the world's most ex exciting whiskey markets in Alarcus. I've been there several times. It's uh, I've had the pleasure to visit. It's an incredible, incredible um country. Our next guest joined the prestigious International Graduate Ambassador Programme last year and today educates passionate Poles in the heritage, craftsmanship and flavour of Valentine's as brand ambassador. Welcome Anna Filipiak, isn't it Anna? Welcome along, how are you doing? That's yeah. no, very correct, uh, thank you for having me. Yeah, I'm doing, uh, I'm doing great, thanks again for complimenting my plants as well. Mm -hmm. oh, I see that, yeah, and listen, if you have any comments, keep them coming in the chat, um, Ken's complimenting the background. Great to see you, Christian from Madrid, thanks for joining us, um, and if you have any questions for anyone tonight, just pop them in the Q&A. So Anna, an exceptional and probably extraordinary year for many reasons in Poland, how's it been? Well, it's been it's been exciting, I have to say, just from my first steps as brand ambassador, because that obviously takes a bit of time to get acquired to the market because I started off in Scotland uh, when it comes to whiskey and then I moved in here. So there was a lot of exploring how Poland works. And, and as you're saying, it's a very exciting market as well, because we've got deep knowledge when it comes to whiskey and we mm. still uh, we still want more, but also quite a challenging year, I have to say. Uh, because of the pandemic uh, mm -hmm. and the job as a brand ambassador was very important is being close to Valentine's fans uh, and right now I think that we're finding uh, new ways of doing it so uh, definitely we have to be a bit more agile which is great. Yeah I think it's been amazing the response in these times from uh, yourselves and others to 
challenging circumstances, but an amazing country and an incredibly exciting vodka market as well, isn't it? As I know from our friends at Viva Rova there, Anna, yeah. Yeah, vodka and Valentine's, these are two things that Paul's got. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So that's our, that's our two star guests tonight, and we've got a third star guest. We've got our new release, Valentine's 7 Bourbon Finish. So we're going to be having yes, yes. a good bit of chat. Good bit of chat tonight. Laughs are plenty. So let's get cracking on. And as yeah. Alex says, if there's any questions tonight, get them on the chat. We'll be we're up for anything when it comes to whiskey chat. Yeah, Sandy will tell you all the answers about Valentine Seven as well. Anna's going to tell you exactly why we created it, and Anna's going to give you an insight into the response. It's perfect. We've got the perfect team for you. Um, Simon straight in Simon no messing about no messing about at all I see that so I'm going to address this question I've got a question for Hannah first Hannah when you see Anna talking about her experience in Poland are you missing your ambassador days? Uh, sometimes yeah like I do miss the the variety because when you're going like every day is different sometimes you have tastings um, with like media with bartenders sometimes you're in bars doing events in a bar so yeah it's definitely a bit more of a um, a spicier routine than the, the office. But no, it's good to be on this side now. Ah, brilliant. Well, listen, straight back in, I'm going to put this to whoever wants to answer it. Why seven years old? Well, we spent, we spent a fair bit of time experimenting. We tried tried a few different a few different years. And Hannah, we had lots of chat, didn't we, about where, where it should go. And we wanted it to be, we wanted it to be a, a real step up from finest so that people could really try something different, that it was quite a unique flavour, but still have the, the Ballantines foundation flavours in there. So, yeah, it was a bit of experimenting, different ages, and seven was just the absolute sweet spot at the end of the day for the new expression. And there was a nice link to our heritage as well, wasn't there, Sandy? With George Ballantyne selling seven-year-old whiskey back in 1872. Yeah, you're absolutely mm. right. And do you do you know, Hannah? We didn't even know that at the time. It was afterwards that we found out that he had had a seven-year-old way before all the restrictions were were brought into place on that whiskey needed to be aged for a minimum of three years. He was out there with a seven, so that was a really that that was a bit of a lucky seven uh, lucky. incident. <laughs> do you know what? I'm going to answer that question as the man who looks after the. I should have known. <laughs> so I said, did you know George Valentine once had a seven-year um, Valentine's incredible stuff? Oh, really? um, I know, I know. Um, the things you discover. Anna, interestingly, you're seeing that number, that that number seven. Valentine's has experienced a huge growth in Poland. It's quite incredible, number two in the world. But that number seven, that Valentine seven years old, will be hugely important to finest drinkers. No, yeah, definitely. I find that for many people in Poland, Valentine's Finest is that first whiskey, that very introductory whiskey. Uh, and then probably as the time passes, we need something more. Where, as I, as I said, like Polish consumer is really interest, interested in what's there uh, and we're searching for new things. So then Valentine's Seven comes in and Deanna has to say that that seven number is a great one for us. It's when I'm talking to consumers and asking them what they think about and what they think about the bottle. They obviously always comment on very elegant design, but also that number seven really stands out. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. And Hannah, that's the crucial thing, isn't it? That's the crucial point that the, the, the Valentine's drinkers are looking for new experiences. That's really what's behind us, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. And I think that previously, so what we did with Valentine 7 was look at our portfolio and thought, okay, where can we fit something in? And between Finus and Valentine's 12, there was this gap for people to have a bit more of a premium whiskey, something with a different flavor profile, but that stays accessible because it's still very affordable. Um, so it fits very nicely into our range in that respect. Brilliant. And listen, people aren't messing around tonight. They've been very direct. Um, the audience tonight. So, um, Frank uh, Biscopec, Anna, our friend in Toronto, been a friend for many, many years. Frank was the Glenlivet ambassador in Canada, says Jim Dobry, um, and also Miss Brovia. Um, he expects you're a Polish, he says he expects you're a Polish Scot like himself, but that's not the case. How long were you in Scotland, Anna? No, so, so it's been a year and a half since um, when I stayed for a year and a half in, in Scotland, but then I moved back to Poland. So I was actually, um, yeah, I was actually just finished uni and moved to Scotland, stayed there, loved it, then moved back. 
That's a, a, you, you certainly picked up the accent. Yeah, you know, I, I think that's what Frank's hitting at, isn't it, Frank? Uh, 100%. Um, Mark, nice to see you on too. Um, Caroline's no messing about either, Sandy. Straight in there. Um, we have a couple of great questions, and we'll come to this later again, but have you used the same whiskies as Finest, or have you created a bespoke blend? Yeah, that, that, that's a good question, and, and, and it would have been the easiest job in the world just to make it seven years old Valentine's Finest recipe. But we wanted, we wanted to have that real American flair in it. We wanted it to have that bourbon influence, that, and, and some of the whiskies work better with bourbon, and the Glen Burgie, Glen Burgie in particular is one that's got that real thick, sweet, jammy notes, and we upped that. So basically the answer to your question, Carolyn, is it's a, it's a bespoke blend for the Valentine's Seven. Caroline, Gregor, two great questions as well that I'm going to come to in a few moments because we're going to turn to a regular section of the show. Um, you can't expect banal banter for the next 30 minutes. Please keep the um, comments and the questions coming. They're much appreciated. Uh, we love to hear from you. Um, now, we have a regular hobby session every week. Um, and so far, despite, despite considerable opposition, we've decided to keep it. Um, as you can see, Sandy is a huge antiques fan. For those of you who don't know, this is Sandy's passion outside whiskey and blending. Um, and you were telling us earlier, you're in front of what, dinky toys and glass collection there, Sandy? Yeah, 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 yeah. There's, there's just no end to the, the Hislop hoard. This is, this, is a, this is becoming a real habit coming live from the Hislop vault. Are you a hoarder? Oh, oh absolutely, yeah. I, to be honest, it's only a matter of time before I'm on one of those programmes on the TV, you know, like the hoarder next door. <laughs> Uh, although everything's for sale as I understand um, so Sandy one of your big passions is watches and we set you a challenge every week to pair um, I like that Ken Valentine's banal banter um, we, we, we set you a challenge every week to pair a watch with the whiskey that's the star of the show what have you got tonight Sandy Hislop I put a lot of effort into it this week. I put a lot of thought into it. I wanted to cover as many angles as possible. So I've gone for something completely different tonight. I've gone for something vintage. So I've gone for a, a vintage now. Valentine's Bourbon 7 finished 100% in bourbon barrels. It's got that real American attitude, American flair. So I've gone for something American tonight. So I've gone for a, a vintage Waltham pocket watch. Now, in, in rose gold... So lovely, gold tones match the colour of the whiskey. It's also old-fashioned, so matches the best cocktail for Valentine's Bourbon 7. Covering all the angles tonight, chum. Jeez, oh, Sandy, that, that was your best yet, I think. You know, although I did, when you turned it around, I was able to see the camera crew when you turned <laughs> on the, 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 the reflection in the, the bag. If only one day, Sandy, when Scotch watches which is on uh, national TV. No, that's a beautiful watch, a beautiful and what about What about music, Alex? What are you telling me about that? What have you paired up for music tonight with Valentine's Bourbon 7? You know what? I, I struggled with this one tonight because I wanted something that was Americana, but first, I've been listening to some great music in the past week. I would recommend that you all look up uh, Future Islands. Great band. If you have a chance, just look up Google Future Islands and the David Letterman Show. They released a new album on the 9th of October, it's called As Long As You Are. Absolutely brilliant. Um, and uh, as DJs used to say when I was a boy, check it out. Um, so I've lost all credibility there. So do you know who I went with in the end? And let me see, where have I put it? And I like uh, Simon's suggestion, Shed 7. Uh, some people yeah. in here know, know who Shed 7 are, of course. I can oh. see Anna and Hannah just saying who. So I went with Graham Parsons. And now, please make your own suggestions as to what you would pair with Valentine 7. So this is Graham Parsons, the early years, 1963 to 65. Parsons died the year that um, I was born, and he recorded solo. He was part of the International Submarine Band, the Birds, who some of you might know, and the absolutely superb Flying Burrito Brothers. And the reason I think Parsons particularly suits Valentine's is he blended music from the four corners of America. He blended rhythm and blues, soul, folk, rock, and brought them all together. He was, he was from Florida originally. And I've just seen the number count jump. People are jumping in thinking, what's going on here? Um, but what really stuck out to me, we know Ballantines is blended from the four corners of Scotland. It's a beautiful parallel. 
But I looked up Graham Parsons early and I, I saw this quote about him. And this was about country music and rock music. And he was described as blending these genres to the point that they become indistinguishable from each other. And I just thought that was brilliant because that's exactly what you do, Sandy. You know, and here, here we have Valentine's Seven, country and rock coming together in a single bottle. Okay, bourbon, absolutely brilliant. And you'll still see Parsons today, and, you know, he might have died in 1973, but he inspired First Aid Kit's song, Emily. we hear him in there. So absolutely brilliant. Keep your suggestions coming. Thanks, Ken. S Club 7, your favourite band. What's happening with S Club 7? Ah, exactly, Hannah. Exactly. The Eagles, yeah, yeah, I thought about the Eagles, definitely, Caroline. I had them in my, I also had the band until I realised that uh, they were from Canada. I had a few from Canada that I thought were American, but um, we've got a few Canadians on, so I better be careful. Mark Connor, Bruce Springsteen, I like it. Very good suggestion. Born to run, absolutely brilliant. Um, Hannah, rescue Sandy and I from this uh, corner of a cul-de-sac we've run up. Um, what, what's your own interests? So one of them is that I'm in a book club. So a group of my friends and I, Um, We started a book club nearly two years ago now. And the reason that it kind of kicked off is because it was around the time that the iPhone started doing the screen time update at the beginning of every week. So giving you that awful notification, like we spent four hours looking at your phone last week and we were all really shocked. Like, how can we be spending that much time per day just beaming nothingness into our brains? So we decided to start a book club to try and educate ourselves and do something more productive. And now we've read almost 20 books, actually. So it's been, mm-hmm. we tried to do one monthly um, and we've managed to pretty much stick to that. So yeah, we've done quite well. And I was thinking about American authors that we've read by. And there's not really any, like, we mostly stick to sort of British, well, Irish, Scottish and English writers. You can tell there's a bit of bias. <laughs> but the first book we actually read was To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee, which is obviously a classic. And even mm-hmm. though it's set in the 1930s, the theme is still very relevant today. Mm-hmm. So it's definitely a book I would recommend to anyone um, if they've not already read it, because I know a lot of people read it in school. Um, but yeah, I think it's great. It's definitely made me read things I wouldn't normally read, which is always a good thing. Oh, brilliant. And it's interesting. I wonder if that was the point of the iPhone screen time to drive you away, because surely they want to bring you closer. Um, I mean, it's an interesting worked. one. Yeah, yeah, but like great. In the same screen time. <laughs> great, great suggestion. And um, certainly, I, I saw an interesting fact about To Kill a Mockingbird the other night on a great quiz show called Only Connect. And it was originally called Atticus, was the name yeah. of the book when it was first launched. But absolutely brilliant. You're right. Great relevance today, um, Anna. Thank you. And Anna, I'm going to watch this. Hannah and Anna, I knew I was going to watch this. Anna, when I was been um, reading your CV for the second time, of course, may I say. <laughs> um, I saw that you had graduated in product design. I see that great picture uh, behind you. Can you can you, um, can you you bring that experience of product design and your knowledge of art into, into what you do? Yeah, definitely, because quite a lot of people actually think that product design maybe has nothing to do with whiskey industry apart from obviously design, designing the bottle uh, itself. But I actually found that it brings quite a lot of um, into my taste. Uh, So there's a lot of experiences that I'm bringing in. And probably my fellow brand ambassadors know, a whiskey tasting is, first of all, a full time experience that you have to bring uh, to your uh, customers and to your consumers. Uh, So there's things like understanding the public um, that you're talking to. And product designers use that knowledge as well as just we look at products and we look how people use the product. During whiskey tasting, you have to look at people and how they taste the whiskey and if they like it or not, so that then you can bring in whiskeys that they like and that they have good experiences with. Ah, Brilliant. And so will we see you once your uh, time in the International Graduate Programme is over in two years, perhaps joining the product development team in in, in, uh, Kilmallet? Perhaps. I wouldn't try to redesign the Valentine's bottle, though. It is an iconic design. It definitely can't be changed. It's a perfect design, I would say. It's, yeah. it just, it's just the story behind it as well. As we all know, the briefcase blend that was just basically designed to fit uh, perfectly uh, into, into a briefcase. That's a nice one. I wouldn't try to change that. No, I think it's a good point because it's actually something that we thought about doing 
not that long ago, only a couple of years ago, we thought maybe the bottle needed to be refreshed, that it was maybe looking a bit dusty. And so we did some research to see what people think. And um, the people who were in the, in the research, they were asked just from their own recollection to draw the Ballantine's bottle. So without seeing it, um, so we said, okay, Ballantine's whiskey, draw the bottle. And what they remember is the angular shape, that sort of rectangular shape of the bottle. They remember the brown glass. They remember the Chevron label and they remembered the logo. Yeah. Which are all things that we were maybe going to change. So on the back of that research, because that's what they were recognizing and that for them was Valentine's, we decided not to change it. So it's staying as it is for the foreseeable. I, I think it makes you feel at home. I you know, spend a lot of time in France. It's always behind the bar. And you know, I'm not, you know, I'm not like Scott overseas looking for sausage, egg and chips and a copy of the Daily Record. But when I walk into a bar, it's great, great to see to see this. You know, it's absolutely brilliant. Let's just go to the comments for a second because they're too good to miss. So we had S Club 7, Eagles, Bruce Springsteen. We had some more suggestions. Manic Street Preachers, Welsh but, <laughs> Welsh but brilliant. <laughs> um, thanks, Gregor. Simon, Whiskey in the Jar. Alan, I like your talking head suggestion. David yeah. Byrne, born in the Barton, American Bandy. Eh? That's a great, um, great suggestion. Uh, I like that, Sandy. It's a cracker. Caroline saying thanks. Sandy wasn't sure uh, if it was the same whiskies in different proportions from those in finest. She said she loves Glenburgie. Used it for an exclusive single malt bottling back in the 90s. Yeah, um, can't, be, can't beat a bit of Glenburgie. Ken said he studied To Kill a Mockingbird and he did it in 1976. Um, <laughs> and uh, John, thank you, John, saying an interesting book, of course, was it easy to relate to the old US Southern culture, Hannah? Um, I think they paint such a vivid picture of it. Yeah, I think was it wasn't so much the, like relating to the culture that stood out for me, it was more relating to the protagonist, because she's, she's quite young, she's a child, so that like childish innocence and seeing the world through their eyes and then coming of age and becoming an adult and sort of seeing some of the more harsher realities. I think that's something that you can really relate to. Um, yeah, it's just a great book. Right, and Ross, with Sandy's Watch, we want Smooth as Tennessee Whiskey by Chris Stapleton. That's going on the playlist. Ross and Vonnie has come in with the theme music to The Magnificent Seven. Oh, You're too, oh Vonnie, why did we not think of that? I wish we had spoken <laughs> earlier. <laughs> We'll need, we'll need to get Vonnie in as a consultant. Yeah, um, brilliant, brilliant. Well, listen, thank you for that. Over to Sandy uh, to interview Anna. Anna, um, we've got some... We, want, we wanted to know a bit more. You know, Alex and I were talking before we, before we, we invited everybody on the, onto the episode and we were, we were saying, you know, Poland's, Poland's the second biggest market in the world for Valentine's after France. It's a massive market, you know, and, you know, your role is a really, really important one to keep to keep that momentum going with Valentine's. So, you know, you're going to tell us a little bit about, you know, what, what is a normal week like for you as a, a graduate brand ambassador? Yeah, so definitely it varies a lot because, yeah, as you mentioned, it's a big market, so there's quite a lot of uh, needs uh, that we've got in here. It's uh, definitely being close to the consumers and, and our Valentine's fans. So these would be a lot of just consumer tastings. We had great true music tasting, for example. Right now we're kicking off with the new experience for Valentine's 7 bourbon finish. Uh, these would be entree trainings. Uh, so just traveling around Poland to, to different cities and just really connecting uh, with the bartenders. Or these would be quite edgy uh, boiler room events or kind of Bye. nighttime uh, events. So definitely that connection uh, with Valentine's and music is just something that's... Uh, that's so totally have, cool. you had, have you had a few boiler room events in Poland and I didn't realize they'd had them there? So yeah. Yes, we did. Uh, have we you did been? Have you been? Was it exciting? No, so I actually have to actually I have to say that uh, when I got uh, offered the job, I was going to go, but actually because I haven't started yet, I didn't manage to go to the one last year, uh, and uh, I was actually involved in organising uh, the one this year in March that unfortunately hasn't happened. Ah, um, right, right, uh, right coronavirus but uh, I had quite a lot of uh, online li online live streams uh, that I've been organizing with uh, DJ communities and here in Poland and they've been absolutely great as well it's actually amazing how much you can arrange just online there there have been people that I haven't met in person 
and uh, because we started working together throughout the lockdown and then we met up uh, in summertime and that was an amazing experience I have to say. You're, you're probably you're probably quite well placed to give Alex some uh, advice on his music taste actually. <laughs> yeah, we can... yeah I was I was there at the birth of Rave I will let you know I was <laughs> there were the days early 90s and top of a speaker. So, um, so... So, so Anna, what do, you, what do you think is the secret to Ballantyne's success? Why do you think Poland, Polish drinkers and Polish consumers love Ballantyne so much? You know, what's their view of Ballantyne's? Yeah, many people actually ask me that. And I don't know if I can actually tell you what's the secret. There's a couple of things to it, definitely. Uh, one thing I would say is probably the history that, uh, that we've got with Ballantyne's. So it's one of the first whiskey Ballantyne's finest that we had on Polish markets um, and it's just stayed there on top, probably top three uh, throughout this whole time. So obviously the first whiskey that we would see on the shelves when Polish market was opening for imported products when it was uh, opening up to uh, to Scotch whiskey. Uh, and then right now, as I kind of mentioned, for uh, many of us, for young Poles, is that introductory whiskey. Uh, yeah. so your first whiskey that you would notice on the shelf that you would buy and you would share uh, with your friends, but something that would invite you into this uh, world of whiskey because it's uh, just very approachable when it comes to uh, its taste as well, something uh, something that we really like to drink because it's quite sweet. There's that vanilla flavor in it. Um, and this is what we just uh, like locally in Poland. So I would say the history and the taste. So I know it's, I know it's early days, Anna, but do you, how, how have you found Ballantine 7 being received? You know, are, are people interested in it? Are people, you know, are they, they, they talking about it? Yeah, hugely interested, um, I have to say, because all of these fans, Ballantine's finest fans, um, who loved it, they are starting to grow up right now. So they are starting to think, uh, we're needing something more. What else is there? Uh, how can we maybe jump up a little bit? Uh, and that's exactly where Ballantine 7 Bourbon Finish comes in. So it definitely got, it's got that age statement. So it's got that depth of scotch. But then through that finishing process in Bourbon Cast, this is like a gimmick to us we're all we're all wondering and I had a lot of questions coming in so what is that finishing process what's what's that and bourbon casts what does it get to the whiskey does it give anything and then it's just yeah there's quite a lot of interest yeah that's good it must be quite exciting being involved when something new like that gets launched because it's not it's not like every month that there's a new expression of valentine's comes out it's quite a quite a milestone when you add something permanently to the valentine's family it must be exciting no, you're absolutely right. It is, it is really almost the feeling of receiving a new member to the family because yeah. you have to you have to make a space um, for that bottle and you have to introduce it to, to everyone, obviously. Okay. Okay. And a question from Frank Biscopeg. He's obviously been to um, Poland and, again, one of the best bars he's visited is Dom Whiskey um, and Dom and Gdansk and one in Warsaw too. The incredible collection, Anna, isn't it, that they've got there? Absolutely. And yeah, it's uh, it's actually a beautiful collection. This is actually one of the bars. I'm going to let my dog in. He's scratching at the door. It'll just be a sec. This is live TV. Sorry, keep going, Anna. I can hear yeah, you. That's exactly. That's live TV happening um, for you. So uh, this was actually one of the bars that I used when I was creating my uh, video when I was applying to Shiva's Graduates. This was uh, one of the bars that I used to go to and I just used to look at the shelves full of whiskey and I would just pick up a random dram just to, just to give it a taste. I mean, it's a great place, and we we definitely need more whiskey and uh, uh, Johnson and Ballantines in the US. Without a doubt, they can only get finest. And Hannah, you you'll be working on that. Hannah, I think it's and actually just while I say Anna and Hannah both part of our international graduate program. If you know any young graduates that would like to join that program, a shameless plug. Please just contact me, and um, we have a wonderful team of fifty graduates in 20, more than twenty five countries around the world. And um, so, Hannah, I don't think. Um, views of a clear picture of the evolution of our whiskey from concept to launch um, and you've been I know Sandy we've been asked it every time we do uh, an event together tell us about your role Hannah and specifically about Ballantine 7 and your role in that yes I think a lot of people don't realize how long a process actually is it takes a long time you can see Sandy nodding there he definitely knows um I think how it starts is that in the marketing team, we would look at the Valentine's portfolio and think, okay, where is there a gap? Where is there something we could do? And as Valentine's, as a brand, we want to be 
as accessible as we can, like to everybody so that they can enjoy whiskey. So that was another big factor in launching Valentine 7 Bourbon Finish was trying to get the the sweetness of bourbon in our Scotch whiskey to make it more accessible to more consumers. I think the once we've identified an opportunity, the most important thing is speaking to Sandy and the blending team because obviously whatever we want to do, we can cook up crazy plans in the marketing team, but it really depends on the inventory, um, what's in our warehouses, what's actually possible. Thankfully, um, Sandy confirmed that it was, but I think the whole process is just really collaborative the whole way through because as we're working on it and as we're developing it, we have to be working with um, the blending team the whole time, the legal team to make sure that what we want to call it and how we're describing it fits with SWA regulations, which are obviously Scotch Whiskey um, Association are obviously very strict. We have to work with the production team um, for the bottling, for print tests on the labels, all that sort of thing. And then as all this is going on in the marketing team specifically, we would be thinking, okay, how can we make a world around this new whiskey? What will it look like in an advert? What will it look like on social media? And how will all that come together? So yeah, I think it probably takes around 18 months from, from the very, very concept to it actually being um, available for somebody to purchase. It's I think a you're lot right. of time. Yeah. I think you're right, Hannah. I think it's much more collaborative than, than people think. You know, it's not just it's it's not just one meeting between us, is it? You know, it's yeah. it's it's several meetings over a period of time and it's fine tuning and just guiding guiding that that development along the way and just settling on where we want to be and Goodness me, I'm only I'm only part of it. I'm only just what's inside the bottle. There's a lot of stuff going on that you 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 have to deal with out with that, you know, packaging and as you say, legal and all that sort of stuff. You know, Jesus, there's a lot of things going on. Yeah, and I think something I missed actually is um, speaking to all the different teams in the countries that sell Valentine. So in our markets, um, we're in almost daily contact with the marketing teams in those markets to make sure they have everything they need to launch Valentine 7 World and Finish locally and provide them with all the different assets they require, whether it's um, presentations to help do brand education, like what Anna does, or whether it's um, like a little shelf talker to help um, promote Valentine 7 in the in supermarkets. It can be anything really. So there's all that side of things as well. Anna, one question we're getting is, and, and Becky's saying, um, Becky, thanks for joining us. It's fantastic to hear the story of how a new product transitions from idea to glass. And you're saying that's an, a year and a half. It's 18 months in, in process from launch right through. It's really a labour of love, isn't it? And yeah. did, did, did you find your previous experience in France, understanding the customer, the consumer working with as an ambassador in France, um, helped on that project, Hannah? Yeah, definitely. I think what it helped with, there's probably three main things it helped with. So the first one would be that just being an ambassador really expands your knowledge all the time, especially in a market like France, which is quite um, established as a whiskey market. When you're conducting tastings and speaking to people and they're asking you questions, it's constantly challenging you to develop your knowledge. And if there's things you don't know, then you have to go away and find out more about it. The second thing I think it really helped with is understanding the commercial reality for because in our marketing team sometimes we're in a bit of a bubble and we maybe don't realize what it's like to for the sales team to go and sell this new whiskey to bar like a bartender to sell it into a supermarket chain so I think it helped with my understanding of that as well because I worked quite closely with the sales team and then I think the last thing it was really good with was as being an ambassador probably actually no one else really has the sort of interaction that you speak directly to people who are drinking your whiskey and people who are buying it and they give you their feedback directly they tell you what they like what they don't like they say why is it named like this it doesn't make sense and you know you get these really really useful insights from a consumer perspective that you might not maybe think about yourself so I think having that experience helped with my reflection for sure in the marketing team right an outstanding job and um, John was saying that Ballantines was once a one million plus case brand in the US, which is incredible. And also we have a question from Caroline saying, what are the key markets? Where can we get it for Ballantine 7? So good question. Um, the main key markets for us are France, Poland, Russia, Brazil and Chile. They're the biggest ones, but we also have a lot of other markets who are launching. So 
a few Eastern European markets like Bulgaria, Lithuania, um, Hungary, we have Germany, we have Switzerland, um, we also have some bigger countries like India, Japan, um, maybe China in the future. But if you do want to buy yourself a bottle, the UK don't currently sell it in supermarkets. But if you go on drinksupermarket.com, you can buy it there. And they ship to quite a few different countries across the world. So there should be a way you can get your hands on it somehow. Brilliant, brilliant. Well, listen, I think I'm going to turn, now we'll turn to Ballantyne 7. And thanks for that, um, Hannah and Simon, saying we have a great team ethos from marketing, blending, packaging, bottling, to people on the ground promoting our products. And I think that's the beauty of tonight. That's what we have here, that team represented. And um, now, Ballantyne's finest is the, the house poor in Robertson, <laughs> in Robertson Towers here. Um, absolutely adore finest. And I think it's because I know the passion that everyone puts into it. Uh, can I challenge you all to just um, describe the house style for everyone first? And if anyone wants to comment what they think the house style is of Ballantyne's, please do in the chat. Um, Anna, can I come to you first? How do you describe Ballantyne's finest, the, the house style? Yeah, so for me, it's always definitely red apples that I get mm -hmm. straight away uh, on the nose. And then it's that vanilla. And actually quite an interesting one for me uh, is always that little bit of spiciness. I, I just I just really love that in finest because it's quite surprising. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Brilliant. So, Sandy, apples and spiciness? Straightforward for me. It's balanced, mm -hmm. it's sweet, and it's smooth. That's the... That's the foundation that goes through the DNA that runs through the whole family of Ballantines. Right, and Hannah? I think, yeah, the balance is probably what does it for me. I think it's a great go-to whiskey, and that balance means that you can enjoy it on its own, on the rocks, um, it, holds its, it's hold, it holds its own in a cocktail, or even if you just want to mix it with ginger ale or coke, it's great as well. So I think the versatility, thanks to that balance, is um, the house style for me. Lots of choice. Yeah, it's good. I mean, yeah, I think I agree, and we're getting that. I think we're getting. Um, uh, let me see. If, uh, Frank saying he's getting in Quebec. Uh, Kevin saying, can we get it in Scotland? Um, Simon saying, vanilla, juicy red apple, spice, and sweet. Um, good. Will the seven-year-old bourbon be available in Canada? Maybe one day. <laughs> get your order in, Frank. <laughs> your pipeline, but um, um, are, are good. Our good friend Rob's asking if we can get it in um, the USA. And it looks like everybody wants it. Yeah. <laughs> USA, we need to get it there. It's not planned at the moment, is it, Hannah, as I understand? No. No, so uh, the USA, um, they, because Finest is actually quite um, new there at the moment, they want, mm -hmm. they want to make sure it's established first before they launch uh, second whiskey in the Valentine portfolio, so that's mm. why they're holding off a little bit, but they are interested. Mm -hmm. Well, listen, let's turn to Valentine 7 itself, and Anna, you're going to create uh, an incredible old-fashioned for us, aren't you, um, and, and put that together, but let's go to our master blender himself, and uh, Hannah, see if he actually delivered on uh, the brief. <laughs> so, <laughs> let's try it together, Thanks Sandy. Pressure, Alex. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Hannah said earlier a, a very specific brief was to create that sweetness of uh, the bourbon cast. Sandy, tell us how you did it. Yeah, we had it. We did. We did a lot of playing about with the base recipe. We did. We we, we made we made a, a, a few formulations of the base recipe, and some of the some of the whiskies that were in the original maturation were were bourbon barrels as well. But as I said earlier, we wanted to step up from finest. We wanted to really give that sweetness to get that really smoothness. Stick to that. Valentine's signature flavour, but for me, it was vanilla, it was toffee, I wanted honey, I wanted all these things. And just to do that, we didn't want any mucking about here, Alex. We took the whole blend, every single drop of it, filled it into bourbon barrels again and left it for a finishing period. Now, not an exact science, Alex. It's not about just putting it in casks and that's it. We'll leave it. We'll come back to it in eight months. We'll come back to it in a year. Myself and the blending team were sampling it every eight weeks. Every eight weeks, the samples were coming in. So we were judging it on flavour, not on time. And that's the way going forward, every single batch of Ballantine's Bourbon 7 will be made. Here's a question for you. If, if we know that, you know, as I was saying, it's the house poor in Robertson Towers here. Yeah. Um, they, um, it's on the gantry. Um, if there's ever, we know that, 
American barrels are traditionally used in the maturation of Ballantines anyway. Yes. Well, how did you then add to that experience that you get? We it, know is it's predominantly, it is predominantly it is predominantly American oak that's used within that maturation. But to go and take to go and take first and second fill American oak freshly emptied bourbon barrels and put them into that, it gives it a real lift. It lifts right. it further right. again. It's almost like you've got something that's sweet. You've got, you've got, you want that toffee. You want that vanilla. You want that honey. If you just want to lift it to the next level, you've got the, you've got the added advantage here as well that you've got the full seven years maturation. It's got a lot. It ticks a lot of boxes here when you're going for something. When we're talking about Hannah and her brief, you're wanting sweet. You're wanting toffee. You're wanting vanilla. You want to raise it to the next level. And you, you, you touched on it earlier, Hannah. You, you nailed it. It's got to be versatile. Got to be able to be, got to be drunk. People got to love it neat. People that traditionally drink Valentine's got, got to love it. Love it with a bit of ice. Have it as a flipping highball. It's ace as a highball. <laughs> An old-fashioned, it makes a brilliant old-fashioned. That's what you want. You want you want a whiskey that you can take home. And goodness me, at the moment, we are taking whiskey home. But everybody, everybody in the house can have it the way they want it. And it's still really tasty. Brilliant. Well, listen, cheers to that, everyone. Slanger, here's to a drink together. Cheers. Love it. Cheers, everyone at home. Mm. This is what I love about Scottish Watch. We've got Rob in Miami commenting, followed by Arena in Moscow. How good is that? We reach around the world. So great to see both. Arena saying a great whiskey for any occasion. Uh, Mikey's asking, will we get in Dubai? Um, you can take it in your suitcase, Mikey, next time you're back in Scotland. <laughs> Uh, Megan, thank you. The best thing about Valentine's definitely versatility. And Anna, you made some great cocktails. Um, um, and Andrew Barsley saying, Sandy, you were never very kind about my briefs. So, um, on to, so Anna, would you like to talk us through the old fashioned, you know, a classic whiskey and a classic cocktail? Yeah, of course, with a pleasure. Let me just pick up some ice and transfer myself to my home bar. Brown, I'll take the questions while you're going to the home bar. So, um, yes, in fact, Kate, perfect link. It's almost like we rehearsed it. Kate, thank you for joining us. Um, you mentioned an old fashioned. What is the perfect spec, Anna? I don't know why I'm shouting. You're no further away from me. <laughs> exactly. This is going to have to be me. Yeah, my voice is going to uh, probably pick up a little bit. My, my neighbours might be uh, getting a bit grumpy about that, but I'm sure we'll be fine. I'm going to give them an old fashioned afterwards if they come and knock on my door. That will be completely fine. So as you know a little bit about me right now, I am a product designer. So one thing that you have to know about designers is that we want to make everything pretty simple okay, for ourselves. This is what design is all about. So this is actually a very simple, old fashioned, classic one, uh, but the one they can actually uh, make at home, just like me, actually don't even need to use the special uh, tools that I'm gonna, I'm gonna have in here. You can just use the normal spin instead of a uh, bar spin. So super is easy. What we're going to use is Valentine 7. And what I find is quite nice for an old fashioned is that it brings that extra layer to it. So again, that depth of scotch, your classic bourbon, old fashioned, 50 mils of that. And then one thing, when we want to sweeten it up, that's actually a secret that my bartender friends uh, in Poland told me is that you actually don't need to take the sugar. You can just make sugar syrup at home. So this is the Marara sugar syrup that I made by myself. It's just basically a ratio two parts sugar to one part water. And we're going to add just one bar spoon of that. That's perfect. And then our last ingredient. So in your classic old fashioned, you would have an Angostura bitters. You would add three dashes of it. Actually, what I find highlights quite nice Valentine's Seven bourbon finish is orange bitters, and that's what I'm going to add to my old fashioned. So three dashes going in here. And right now, you actually want you might want to keep the volume down because I'm going to stir it. And it might get a bit loud. Just to dilute my cocktail a little bit. It's it's the perfect sound when you're in a bar because that's how you know that your drink is being made, but not the best sounds when you're on a live stream. And the last thing that I'm going to have and add 
as the garnish, so just classic orange peel. Uh, you can just try to bring it around the rim. You can try to squeeze it a little bit. You can try to do a flambe. Because I'm at home, I'm not going to do it. I don't want to burn my house down, okay? So I'm not <laughs> Ah, oh, beautiful. Cheers. Yeah, cheers. Lovely. Well, well done. I absolutely adore an old-fashioned. And Hannah, did you decide um, that that would be the signature drink? Was that, was that, did you, did you look into that? What was the thinking behind it? I want an old-fashioned now. I know we do. Yeah, we did look into it quite a bit. And part of the inspiration was obviously because, um, the key serve for bourbon is in an old fashioned, so it made sense to make that link. And then we wanted to put our own twist on it as well. And because an old fashioned it has that sugar cube or sugar syrup, sugar in some form in it, it is quite a sweet drink. So, and Valentine 7 bourbon finish is quite, quite a sweet whiskey as well. So we landed on the orange bitters because the zestiness, the citrusy notes, citrusy notes really complement the sweetness of the whiskey and make a really good mix. And, Everyone who's tried it so far, and we've tested it on quite a few people, has said the same thing that they've bought orange bitters since and they made it for their friends at home because, like Anna just showed you there, it's really easy to make. Um, so I think, yeah, a lot of people will be serving them up this Christmas time for their friends and family. Oh, brilliant. And Anna, is there a big um, cocktail culture in Poland? Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, um, I was actually quite surprised because the bartending community that we've got is a great bartending community, very close knit one as well. Uh, and bartenders are very interested in the newest trends and they actually educate, educate each other on, on the trends happening. So yeah, very vast um, community and, and it's great to be a part of it uh, as well. And listen, we're, we're, we're coming to the close of the show now. So if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Sandy, one of the biggest changes I've seen in the past decade is that move to whiskey and cocktails. Um, you know, you're blending these whiskies together. How do you view that whiskey as part of a cocktail and Valentine's 7 specifically? You know what, Alex? I think we're perfectly placed for, for, for producing whiskies that can, can make amazing cocktails and be drunk. I think I, I touched on it earlier, can be, can be drunk neat, can be drunk with ice. I think, and, I, and I'm not just saying it, I think the Valentine's 7 haven't, right from the outset, we had cocktails in mind. It wasn't like it, it just stumbled upon later on that, um, oh, goodness me, that whiskey works well as cocktail. Right from the start, when we were talking about it, and marketing and Hannah and ourselves were talking about it, we were saying we want it to be good in a cocktail. And I think when you've got that in mind right from the very start, it works really well. Your final whiskey is elevated even further when it comes to going into cocktails. Mm -hmm. So just to stick with the bourbon casks, Sandy, a question, and again, this is what I love about Scottish Watch, because we've got a question from Graham and Keith and Michal in Moscow. So um, we are, and which other TV programme would you have that? And Simon as well has asked the same question. Can you tell us where the, the bourbon casks are from? Uh, no, no, I, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be. Um, I wouldn't be divulging who our supplier is. But you can imagine that you know, Ballantines is a big whiskey. It's number two in the world. We're, we're, we're buying many, many thousands of bourbon barrels in from America every single year, and it is absolutely. We, we would be foolish to be buying them from one supplier. We're buying them from a range of suppliers to make sure that we have continuity of supply. And mm -hmm. um, Bill, thank you for joining us again. And I uh, like your suggestion, Sunny Landreth, the road we are on. I will be certainly looking up that. Um, and a question, Anna, for you, how have we uh, managed to move people away from vodka to whiskey in Poland? I think it's just because of the fact that uh, we've got this variety uh, in our market right now. I think that uh, vodka is just a very classic uh, drink for us and a very natural one. But uh, as I was saying, that Polish consumer is wanting to explore what else is there. And I think that whiskey is a very, uh, very natural uh, link. Apart from uh, apart from the fact, I think this is uh, one of the things that we've got in common with, uh, with Scottish people that I found. We both uh, love whiskey and we both love a good party. And this is just what can accompany it. I love it, and um, uh, perfect dance, I'm sure. I was just thinking Frank Biscubeck in Toronto will be nodding away, as you said that, 100%. Um, a question from John in the US. Uh, crystal glass, 
or let me see what's he asked crystal or regular glass now i've got regular glass here a nice nosing glass mm -hmm. i mean all i had was the blue glass so it's not really ah. not really the good one for seeing the color but there's no wrong way so i've got, I've got a nosing glass but it's just it's purely personal it's whatever whatever suits you something i like something that i can get in my hand and warm the whiskey up whether it's crystal or whether it's normal glass doesn't matter to me as long as i can get my hand and just heat heat the whiskey up. I just love that the way the aroma comes off with the heat. Ah, lovely. Well, listen. Well, that's uh, as drawing to a close and another uh, exceptional Scotch watch. I actually think the uh, best yet, in my view. Um, Anna, thank you for joining us. All the very best in Poland. We look forward to seeing you in the design team in Kilmallid and Dumbarton. Uh, how's the future looking there? How's the next year ahead looking for Valentine's and you, Anna? I think, I think it's looking great. Uh, I think it's looking uh, definitely in the colours of uh, Valentine 7, uh, but uh, also Valentine's Finest is probably still uh, going to be going strong. So definitely look very looking forward uh, to it and looking forward to see how the consumers and the wider public um, are going to take Valentine 7 in. So it's looking great. Brilliant. Thank you for joining us and thank you for that excellent cocktail we shall we'll be making in about 30, 30 seconds. Uh, Hannah, you must be delighted to be here. Congratulations. I don't mean Scotch Watch, I mean the launch of Bar <laughs> Valentine's <laughs> 7. That's, that's, often that a, that's often a career low. Um, <laughs> you must be delighted to see it launch and you know what, what lies ahead for you. What's next for you, Hannah? Well, we have a few other projects, innovation projects with Valentine's. I can't give any specific details about them yet. Um, but I think Sandy and I will be having quite a few more conversations in the coming month. Absolutely. Um, We've had, we had one this week already, Hannah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> but no, there's uh, a few things on the horizon, so keep your eyes peeled. Well, great. We'll look forward to having you back um, when those are launched. And uh, finally, Sandy, how have you, how have you reflect on this evening? Incredible job with Valentine 7, but a great show again. I've had a, I've had a great time tonight. It's been first class. Um, I was lucky... I was lucky the other week to have a, a, a Valentine's Bourbon 7 Old Fashioned with uh, with Ken Lindsay, and it really was. It was ace. It was really tasty. But also, I've got myself a um, highball, highball Bourbon 7 tonight to finish off, which is um, which is oh. absolutely brilliant as well. Oh, where did you pull that from? Was someone... <laughs> it's all in the preparation. Um, yeah. Anna, Hannah, thanks very much for joining us tonight. You've made it for us tonight. It's great to get great to get another angle. Goodness me, uh, you've got me. You, I've never been to Poland. That's going to be top of my list now. Once all the dust settles, I'm getting out to the number two market to see what's going on. It sounds like it's a riot. I'll carry your bags. And Hannah, I'll probably I'll probably speak to you tomorrow. <laughs> and thanks again. Yeah. Cheers. And Thank you very much, cheers. everybody. Cheers, everyone. And just to let you know that this will be available on YouTube. So if anyone's looking for the link, they just need to contact me. We will be back next month with a new studio guest. Um, and we are going to unveil a new dram from our friends at the Glen Levitt. So if you want to be with us next month, that'll be around about November 29th. Um, look out on Instagram. We will be unveiling a classic new the Glen Levitt illicit. Still, if you would like to follow us, you know it's Dram Good Life for me. It's Whiskey Blender Dude for Sandy. We have Anna Stay True and Hannah 2603. So thank you for joining Scotch Watch, uncovering whiskey, one story and one dram at a time. Slander and good night.